It's uh, 8.23, this is BBC Radio Merseyside Breakfast. Good morning to you. Your station, your voice. BBC Radio Merseyside. More of the places you gathered at New Year. I'll go through some more of your comments in a few minutes' time. Uh, but for now, let's uh, let's talk about a little uh, little bit of local history. I love I love local history. Merseyside has often had an influence on the history of not only the region where we live, but the UK. Uh, from Liverpool being the gateway to the world, of course. Birkenhead Park being the inspiration for Central Park in New York. They nick all our ideas. Uh, the first electric trains running between Southport and Liverpool, 1904. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, staying on the rails there, the trams in Birkenhead. The first trams appeared in Birkenhead. Well, there's a special programme on BBC Radio 4 tonight, and it says there's a compelling new stock of evidence that a field in Wirral was the birthplace of Englishness itself. Imagine that. Well, Wirral Viking expert Professor Steve Harding uh, can tell us more. Uh, Professor Steve, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Uh, that's quite a bold statement, that. Wirral, the birthplace of Englishness. Tell me more. Well, it's been, it's been said before, and it's to do with a, a battle that took place uh, over a thousand years ago, uh, before the Battle of Hastings. This was called the, the Battle of, of Brunanburgh. Uh, which has been described as uh, almost as important as Hastings, but of course uh, not many people have uh, have heard uh, about it. But there's a programme on Radio 4 uh, later on today, and apologies to, to Billy, I think, because it clashes with uh, <laughs> with his show. It's on at 3 o'clock. We'll, we'll do a catch-up on the iPlayer. Go on. I would think so, yes, <laughs> of course we can. Uh, so that's, that, 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 that's, that, 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 that's OK. So it's, it's about... Uh, the Great War, it's called, of AD 937. And uh, this war was, or well, this huge battle between uh, the Anglo Saxons and the Vikings and also their Scottish allies, uh, was this huge battle. And so important, but so important that everyone had forgotten where it took place. And uh, it just so happens, actually, that Brunanburgh, the name of the battle, is the old name for. For Bromborough. I was going to ask you about that because I pronounced it uh, in a different way before, and you pronounced it correctly, obviously. But Brunanburgh, Bromborough, Wirral, bit of a coincidence because you've got a bit of a battle on your hands trying to, to convince many other historians that, that Wirral is the place because they're saying it's not the place. I'd say most uh, historians agree that the battle took place on the Wirral. The, there's not that much evidence about it. There's a an Anglo-Saxon poem which tells us of the, uh, the, the the battle, which is written not long after it. But it only gives uh, three clues as to places. One is, is Brunanburgh, the old name for Bromburgh. Mm. Uh, one is Dublin, where the uh, the raiders, or many of the raiders, escaped to after the uh, the, the, the battle, which they, uh, they lost. And a place called Dingsmere, which they escaped from. And no one had a clue where this Dingsmere uh, was. And uh, I, I made this suggestion, which I thought was, you know, too obvious, it can't be true, that it had something to do with the thing of thing wall. Uh, Mergerside's got two thing walls, one on the Wirral and one uh, near Ken Dodd's old Jam Butty Mines yeah. in, uh, in Naughty Ash. But thing walls were the Vikings had the uh, place of assembly. And I suggest that this place, Dingsmere, was the mere of the, the thing, the waterway, controlled by the, the Viking assembly of the thing. So with that and the old name for, for Bromborough nearby, mm. Brunanburgh, we thought that was just too too much of a coincidence. We thought that was uh, that had solved it. But apparently not. You know, people still disagree. And Michael Wood has got this theory that it, it might have taken place in, in Yorkshire. Is he from Yorkshire, Michael? No, he's a Mancunian. Oh, OK. <laughs> and he supports a well, certain football team there, which I won't Straight mention, away uh, he's got Tony. something against us, then, if he's a Mancunian. Straight away. <laughs> but he does... You know, he, he is a very nice bloke, actually. He did a foreword to another book we, uh, another book we did on, on, on Viking DNA, so... He is, uh, he is a good chap, but we do disagree on this point. Steve, uh, what would it mean? An interesting programme to listen to. We sort yeah. of lock horns with each other and, uh, and various ideas. What, and would, it, ideas what would it mean, Steve, for, for Wirral's history? Could we, could we have a Jorvik Centre type thing in, in Wirral? Is this a, a real big deal if it ah. is proven? And how do you prove, though, something from many, many years ago? That's difficult, isn't it? Well, you can't, unless you dig up old bones and things. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's very, very difficult, really. So you're based on supposition of the accuracy of uh, historical writers, and if they get it wrong, then you're really 
uh, you're really in trouble. But uh, you can't. But in terms of if the battle had taken place on, on Wirral on Merseyside, it'd be fantastic, really, because the whole area, not just Wirral, but uh, all around Liverpool, South West Lancashire, is steep with Viking tradition. You know, all the place names, uh, Irby, uh, Pensby, uh, Tranmere, on, uh, on the... Uh, Liverpool side, you've got Crosby, Egbert, Toxteth, all these places. Aintree's another Viking name. So, all Vikings, yeah. We, we, yeah. we do need something like a, a your big centre on Merseyside. And uh, to have this battle there, this huge battle, would be uh, certainly a big thing for this. I, re- I remember a long time ago, Steve, you sorted out my Viking DNA, I think, didn't you? And, uh, Indeed, uh, yes. That's, uh, that, 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 you know, we, we, we talked about that in, uh, in, in great detail. You were right at the start of the... Of, of, of the survey when we were uh, first doing that back I am then. a Viking, though. I'm from Anfield. Is that a Viking name? I think that's Hangfields, isn't it, Anfield? Uh, well, it, it could be, but uh, on, on, just on the edge of Anfield, there's, uh, there's Breck Road, Walton Breck Road, yep. which, uh, and Breck is certainly a Viking name. So, well, there yeah. you are. And I lived on Walton Breck Road, number 258. There you go. <laughs> Steve, have a that's great, have a great new year. Enough, isn't it? <laughs> have a great new year. Three o'clock this afternoon, BBC Radio Four, and if you want to listen to Billy, you can do, and then do a catch up on Radio Four. That's the way it's going to work. Steve, thank you. Thanks, Tony. Well, have best. a great new year. All the very best to you. you as too. Well. Bye. Yeah, I'm a Viking. Did me DNA. I think it'd only been here about two weeks. But yeah, Steve Harding, the Viking man. It's eight thirty 